I got love for you, man. You know what I'm saying? What are we talking about? You know, I'm not here to start any trouble. I'm only going to say nice things about you from now on. I think you're handsome, and I think you're a wonderful host. I'm fat and I'm overweight. Just don't say anything silly. I was waiting for you to say that. I'm not laughing about it. You think this is funny? I take it serious. You know, I don't want y'all to take anything out of context that I'm saying. He's very funny. He likes to joke around a lot. As a personality and as an entertainer, yes. This is going to be really quick. I'm not taking any questions. Go ahead and get comfortable. I'm going to talk for a little bit. You're listening to Cabby Presents, the podcast. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Cabby Richards. Welcome to Monday. Monday's a beautiful day, isn't it? We're trying to make your Monday a little bit more enjoyable with this silly conversation. So what this is, My Guy Mondays. Three of my friends come in, we talk sports, we talk movies, we talk TV, girls, relationships, girls, food, all sorts of things. It's a mixed bag, and I hope you enjoy this edition of My Guy Mondays. It's his favorite day of the week, and these are his dudes. Time now for My Guy Mondays. It's like he never left. Back on My Guy Mondays. (laughs) Actor slash singer. I don't know if people know that you sing, Hoos. Yeah, but I mean, do I? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. So, well, some well, some people know. Like, like I'm a shy gr- singer. I'm a shy singer. Girlfriends, I do sing. girlfriends yeah. know that you sing. Why do they know that I sing? <laughs> <It's> so <laughs> because bad. you sing to them. Yeah, I know. Why do I do that? You, just, <laughs> you, you you play the guitar also, right? I do play the guitar. Yeah. And yeah. and you and and last week on My Guy Mondays, you revealed that you learned a piece of. Uh, 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 um, piano. Oh, piano, yeah, that's right, for the show Saving Hope. That's right, yeah, I learned a bit of that as well. I consider myself a, a shy musician. Uh, Hoos can be seen on Saving Hope and can also be seen on Call Me Fitz. And speaking of Saving Hope, you are a hopeless romantic. Damn it! What is... What? It's like the honesty booth here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, okay. so who are you? Are you not a hopeless romantic? No. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. You're a romantic, though. No, I'm not. I'm neither. You write poetry. I don't write poetry. Yeah, I write, I write, I write hip hop lyrics <laughs> with the word yeah. love. I use the word love yeah. a lot. And uh, you, write, and, you write emotional hip hop. In fact, yes. I, think, I think you started Drake on what he's on right now. I'm, think, ver- I'm very much. I was Drake before Drake. I think I think that's what it was. Right. And I was Kanye before Kanye, <laughs> before the outbursts. I was like, uh, I don't know who, who in hip hop was. I was like LL Cool J, but not as corny, and I definitely didn't have his body. Nor do I lick my. Li- I probably I probably licked my lips. In my whole life, less times than uh, LL Cool J does in a day. Yeah, he licks his lip, looks a lot. Yeah. Remember, like, seeing, like, an LL Cool J, like, in the past couple of years, was it the, not the MTV Awards, but, like, some kind of youthful, like, award show? He's, like, the host. And, yeah. Like, LL Cool J is, like, not that cool anymore. Like, so what are you doing hosting, like, it's the, not the, the MTV the Awards? Choice Awards. That yeah, kind? maybe. And then he's out there, just, or, like, the, is it, maybe it was the Grammys. And he's out there licking his lips, and, like, come on, dude. Why does he lick his lips a lot? I, I, I don't think, know. You know what? I, I I was at one point this year addicted to lip balm. What do you mean? So you like buy? So I'm, I'm like using chapstick, and then and, and I kept using it, and using it, and I I wanted like to, different brands like Blistex and yeah. And, like, so all that like because it's not there's there's like you know if you use Vaseline or coconut oil or one of that one of those organic types of type of things, then your lips don't crave it or don't they're not addicted to the lip balm. But all the other ones after a while. You can get addicted to lip balm. What it, so what it, I think LL Cool J is probably, he probably doesn't even realize it. He might, he might have a minor addiction. No, no, a severe addiction. Because you're saying he looks, looks a lot, which he does, uh, to lip balm. So that's, you, that's, my, that's, my, that's my theory. So who's, uh, and uh, this is, this is uh, I'm going to call, you know, this is like uh, an unscientific uh, diag- uh, diagnosis. Uh, you have an oral fixation, perhaps. I did. <laughs> <laughs> It's di- I'm cured now, thank you. Uh, so we saw uh, we saw Aziz Ansari, uh, oh, just, just for laughs uh, here in Toronto. Mm. Uh, and his if his if his show was 90 minutes, an hour of 20 minutes of those 90 minutes was about relationship, about being single, about being lo- being in love. In in today's time though, right like in 2013. Much, yeah, that's very much very current. That. And he spoke to his audience. He related to his audience succinctly. It was awesome. It was great. Yeah. It was in, at some points embarrassing. Because what? Why was it? Because you? Because you? Well, why was it embarrassing? Because some, some of his anecdotes were they were so dead on. There were things that 
I just like they were they were just so dead on like his his stories about text messaging the communication a guy has with another woman that he he likes and then the type of response that she might give like it is it was just perfect the way he it was it was as if he was reading my phone and he read someone's phone out for God's sake in the middle of the show he did and I don't know when uh, Aziz and Sar is gonna put out a new special but you'll probably see many of the jokes from that in that special from what we saw is when uh, when we saw Louis CK last year. Up uh, two or three bits from what we saw of Louis C.K. Were you with us last year? I, I didn't go to the Louis C.K. Oh, one. okay. They ended up in his special, Oh My God. Got it. Uh, so you might see some of this, and it's it's great. So if you have a chance to see Aziz Ansari, it's great. But uh, so the relationship stuff. Right. So one of the one of the bits, I mean, we, he talks about honesty and how honest people are via <laughs> text message, which is to say not very honest at not all. Not at all. Uh, like his, his point was, is it appropriate to be honest? Right, like, it, and I and I wonder. And I, I was I was talking with a friend of mine today. We were just walking around, and uh, and I wonder if we'll ever get to a point where we're like so honest. Because people, I think they like to think that they're really honest, but they don't actually. People don't say how they feel. Well, unless, not, yeah, not necessarily about how much they like the person, but it's more or less are they honest about how much they don't like the person, right? Isn't it sort of like I'm not really interested? Like, how do you? Right. So I cut the cord. How do you? Not I find, let someone linger on. Do you, so how honest are you? Like, if you're not into into a girl, like, do you do you just are you like, hey, you know, you should move on, or I'm not really interested in you, or like, if 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 honesty is on a scale from zero to ten, ten being brutally honest, how honest are you? Who's? I'm not. Uh, I'm. I think I'm honest. And let you're, me just you're uh, a let, three. Let me yeah, just, hold, you're on, a three. Hold, on hold on for a second. I don't. It's not like I have like a gang of girls who that 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 I have to now turn them down. I got a gang of girls that are turning me down. I think that's <laughs> one of them. <laughs> like ask them how honest they are. I'm gonna say a one. <laughs> it's like that... Hansel and Gretel. There's like little breadcrumbs. I'm like, okay, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. It's pretty sad. Um. So, but you didn't answer the question. Well, you, I, you turn around. You said, "Oh, girls aren't honest with me." Right. But how honest? I, I, I think I'm honest. So fine. Yes, I. I think give I'm, me a, a I'm a six. I'm a six. You're a six. That's honest. That's like a. That's honest with like a serious. It's like a, it's like a serious explanation. Like brutally honest is like get lost, right? That's, like, that's brutally right. honest. And one. Well, is, br that's that's kind of mean. Brutally honest is like I'm not interested in you. That's brutally honest. Yeah, I'm, still I'm not. I'm still sick. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know anybody who says, well, hey, maybe there are people out there that, that are listening to this that have either written, I'm not interested in you, or have received that text. Wow. But, and, like, and the big part of what Aziz was saying is communication is now just text. Like, I don't know, how often are you on the phone with girls? Who's, like, not often, and I, I, I don't like it. I prefer the phone. Oh, wait, you prefer the phone over text? I don't like to. I don't. I see, I'm the other way. I prefer I, text over the phone. I, I'm, I, to be honest, when I even call you, I'm, I, I'm scared to call you. Call me? Yeah. Why? Because I'm like, I'm just gonna, I, I gotta call Cab, and I know he doesn't like talking on the phone. So I'm gonna, I, I gotta organize my thoughts. And I, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cab, I got three things I gotta talk to you about. Number one, this. Number two, that. Number three. <laughs> that, that's how I am when I'm on the phone. Like I'm like, hey, what's up, man? Good. Boom, and I just jump right into it. Here's what it is. Okay, good. I can't talk. This is too much talk time for us. So I gotta go. I think I talk to my producer Dave the most because because we have like always like work stuff, and we're just like very very to the, very much to the point. Like my, but I do enjoy a conversation. Which a lot of times happens in a text form, but sure. when it's but when it's in person, I I do enjoy that as well. I just think there's certain things about a real conversation that include you know tone, timing, right, right, like when you receive it, like exp facial expression. Yes, yes, body language, nuance. That's all. And honestly, emoticons. I guess they're you know. Do you use them? No, I hate like. But like, the, I don't, like I've I've used the <laughs> wink. <laughs> I've used the wink. I've never done. Okay, I'll tell you this. I, the actual emoticon. Okay, I've used the wink and the smile. I, the, like, but there's like a smile. There's like a big smile. I don't use that. The one with big the teeth. Smile. With the teeth. No, not the teeth. I feel like if I do that, I, it's like my my personal emoticon. <laughs> it should be a brown emoticon. This is a big smile of teeth. I I I, I use that. Or, or if I, I'll use a colon and like a, a uh, one of the brackets. If, yeah, I, if, I think that's a smile. You could do either the frown, the frown or, or the smile. Or the smile. Yeah. I, I don't do the colon P and the D. Like I don't even I don't even know what that is. Yeah, but the, but on your iPhone, those are the images. The emoticons are the. But you don't. I I, I just I use the images. If yeah, the but the image is there, or if the colon, the, if the image is not there, then I'll use the colon in the bracket. But I'm not going to use letters because that's actual code for certain that tra that that's the code for the emoticon. Yeah, yeah. I don't I, know any of that. I don't know any of that. I don't I don't think I've ever used an emoticon.
I'm just a ha 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 guy. I I, it's, I hate LOL. I don't even yeah, use I never LOL. use LOL. Yeah. It's ha ha ha. We've talked about this. Or, yeah. or ba ha ha. Yes. If it's a if it's a legit laugh, it's a ba ha ha. I will give you a ba ha ha or <laughs> twelve or fourteen ha ha ha's. Yeah. Because that's how I'm actually laughing in real life. Uh, so here's the thing about uh, what is he? And so I was having this right. conversation with a friend, and um, this is an interesting thing about relationships. So this Drake album just came out. Nothing was the same. Uh, nothing was the same. And she said that she has received Drake lyrics from dudes. Wow. So the record just came out like Tuesday. Yeah. And that day or the next day, she got dudes were sending her lyrics from Drake like, it's yours. And one guy, one guy. Uh, dudes. Yeah. Well, maybe. Well, yeah, I, I don't know. How, yeah, she said dudes. But I don't think it's like eight dudes. I think it's maybe. Maybe an ex-boyfriend or a guy that she was seeing or something like that. Yeah, but like even that. just more than one is interesting for them to both land on the, this new album that just came out and be like, let's do this whole Drake yeah. thing. Well, d- yeah, it's, it's interesting. So I'm sure the guys thought they were clever by, <laughs> by texting, but she saw right through it. She's like, I know what this is from. Like, texting me, it's yours. Like, I, yeah, that's the, that's the chorus to the Wu-Tang song. And right. then the other one was swanging where the dude said, I got a hashtag swanging. So he included a hashtag in the, in the text <laughs> message. <laughs> To the girl. I, this guy's crying right now. He's listening to your podcast and he's crying. I'm so no, sorry. This guy, I, I feel bad. I'm sorry. I don't know. I, I wonder. I wonder how many. Have you ever texted lyrics no, to a girl? I've never texted lyrics to I have. I have. I've sent an email. My uh, One of my exes, I sent her the lyrics to Water Runs Dry. By Boyz II Men. By Boyz II Men. But I emailed it because we're fighting lots and I said, and I just emailed her the lyrics. But did you, okay, but that's because you were fighting and bro, you yeah, wanted to like make a piece. Yeah. This wasn't just like, hey man, I'm, I'm clever. And then this is like, oh, it's yours. Like remember yeah, that yeah. time in April, it's your, whatever. Yeah, no, I wasn't sending any like, no, lyrics. I, I have any sent, people. I have sent text messages before with like the lyrics. Like I, the Lady in My Life is like my favorite. Maybe, I think it's my favorite song ever by Michael Jackson. Okay. And I've said, but I've always quoted Michael Jackson or if it's Music Soul Child, I've quoted the artist. I haven't just sent it. Just oh, the yeah. line. You haven't just adopted the line. <laughs> like it, like it's, it's yours. It's mine. Right. And, just, and it's like you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm sending it to, like, it, like if I knew a girl from Scarborough, like all the all the like Drake says uh, something like all the prettiest girls live in Scarborough or something like that. And I think the song is called, uh, oh my gosh, it's uh, Connect, Connect. Um, so have you ever? Okay, so have you ever been busted for? Have you ever texted the wrong girl something? Um, close. What do you mean close? It's either you have or you haven't. No, like I'm, unless they have I'm, the same I'm, name. No, like I'm, I've, I've written it and I'm like, oh my god, who the hell am I texting to? And I had to like. And then you looked at the name at the top of the screen. Exactly. Oh, that's so could I caught be bad. myself. Caught myself. Have you? Yeah, I did that once. In well, like, what, was it a bad one, like a serious one? No, but I I texted something that's very personal to one girl, and then. Uh, it was like personal for one, but meant for one girl A. Right. But I sent it to girl B. But this is at the time where texting was rel- this is like two thousand three. So I used the phone which Jeez. I yeah. had to like I had to like log I, yeah. I had to like log into like the the web browser in order to send the message. So I like And it, you're it, texting like through where the numbers have got three letters on each on each number. This is two thousand three. Yeah, no no, but the te- the numbers were the numbers, but it just it, you just it didn't have a name. It was just I had to memorize the girl's number in order to text her because I had to punch it in yeah, to just, like the browser or whatever. But just even to write anything, texting in 2003, you're like just just to compose anything. Yeah, just, yeah, it was it you was don't have it a was whole tough. Keyboard at your disposal. No, it, it, it was the uh, what's that? A A B B C C. It's that. <laughs> what I, I think it's called T9 or something. I had yeah, to, T9. I, yeah, I had it. I had a flip phone at that time, and it was the T9 Great stuff. Great reference. Yeah. T9. Oh Ugh. man. So like dudes, it's, it, and. I guess to, to this Aziz. That's it, why you text. It's because you've been doing it for like ten years. I have been texting for ten years. That's amazing. And That's this amazing. actually it was a girl that introduced me to texting because she would just she would text me I'm like, how did I even get this text message? But then I figured <laughs> out how to do it with my phone. It was like this old Motorola. But yeah, I almost I, I, it. So when I sent that message to girl A, meant for girl B. Right. I'm waiting for the response from girl B. I'm like, well, how come she didn't respond? This? And girl A did not respond either. So then I'm like, what? So after about 25, 20, 30 minutes, I'm like, I, I somehow, I went and I texted again to girl A. The same thing? No, something else. 
because I think I realized my the error of my ways. I'm like, oh no. So then I just I just steered the conversation to something else, and then she didn't bring it up. Like this random message for girl A. So I haven't been busted like... Did girl B even say like, what the hell is this nonsense? No, it was weird. I was just kind of in my head. Because you know like when you're... I feel like because of text messaging and and, uh, we're so much more in our heads. Because we have more time to respond. So like the text message version of us is like really charming (laughs) and smooth and fun. We're a lot funnier, I think. I am for sure funnier. Over text messaging? Via text message. I'm not at all. You're not... You're not... I I am like I I am so I, I'm just awkward over text messaging. What? What do you mean? Because I don't. You have I don't time know. to think. You have time to read. Like you're self editing when you're texting. So you're like yeah. You but then, up- I see those three dots going because I feel like like she the, the girl sends a text and then I have to like I I I gotta like when does when do those dots come up on an iPhone when they're like oh they know that this person's typing or when do the words typing come up like when is that person aware that oh the person that I'm in a conversation with is typing because when that's happening that freaks me out I'm like holy crap she knows I'm typing so I gotta <laughs> so I, I, this is what I do I keep typing and then I edit 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 and I keep typing I'll even type like just random letters to make it seem like I'm typing and then the only thing that'll come out is like. Haha, ha, I know. Like something super short. <laughs> because everything that I'd written, this whole paragraph, this amazing soliloquy, it's nothing. It's just so, like, just completely ha, so ha, about, I know. Ha, I know. Wow, it took a long time to write that. <laughs> Do you have, oh, that's great. Hey, that's, I mean, but that's, that's the world now. It's like, it's, I'm so surprised that you're not as funny over text like that. I, I'm terrible. I would rather the person on the phone. So how often do you talk to girls on the phone? Not often enough because they like texting all the time. So I'm texting all the time. But I just, I just, w- w- I, I'm great in person. I'm great in bed. It sucked. I'm great in bed. I'm great in person. <laughs> <laughs> and then my text game's weird. Uh, I think who's... emails are good because then you can write. Wait, nobody writes emails I anymore know, unless you're saying. working. Right, but then there's like a because then you can write a story. You can get into like the yeah, but you do that over text. You can't. Text is so short. It's just so short. No, but you don't have to keep it to like, it's not like Twitter. You don't have to keep it to 140 characters. You can have like pages of, I think you can go up to six pages of 160 characters. Or you is it write seven that pages? that much of, on a text? Sometimes. Yeah. Well, maybe not seven full pages, but I can like three, four pages. You yeah. just go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It depends on what, I'm, what, we're, what we're talking about. But will you, like, so do you just type and then are, do you ever read it back or do you just hit send? Like, what about grammar mistakes and spelling mistakes? Well, I, I try to self-edit, but a lot of times I do have typos, and, I, and I'm, I'm very aware of there, there, and there, two, two and two, 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 and two, extremely aware, and if I ever catch myself, then I'll immediately just send a, uh, a, a, the next text, like, oh, you know, pardon my typo, or, ha- or like, asterisk typo, the, but the I, always go, I always go, asterisk, like, if I make a spelling mistake, I always go asterisk and the correct spelling of the word. Correct. I do the exact same thing. Yeah. Just so that so they know that I'm not. What uh, do you think when a girl has terrible spelling or grammar? <sighs> what are your thoughts on that? I, I tell, I, I always correct. I always do you asterisk, correct yeah, I correct them, and then <laughs> I do, and then, I, then I'll write, then I'll write grammar police. <laughs> So they know, That's like, amazing. yeah. So they they have to. I love step- the idea of she's saying something really like deep and special. Like, you know, I'm having a real hard time with my mom. I just, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're there for me too. And they're like, ah, it's two with two O's. Yeah, or I'm glad you're there. Grammar, yeah, <laughs> or I'm glad you're there, there for me. And she writes T T H E I R E I R. I'm like, uh, it's actually T H E I R. You're so sensitive, Cam. <laughs> I'm just trying to make you a better person. That's the world that we live in. Um, <laughs> who's my guy Mondays. This is so much fun. I it can't tell fun. you how much fun this is. We yeah. can, relationships. We could talk about that forever, which I'm sure we will because n- neither of us will ever figure it out properly. One of the great things that Aziz said, and I totally relate to this, is that the conversation he has with a seven-year-old who a seven-year-old is having a hard time. Oh my God, this girl doesn't like me, and he's stuck in a sandbox. He has. The, it's like the exact same problem a seven-year-old has. The same problem that he has. Or we as have. twenty-seven. Yeah, at twenty-seven. So the problems that we'll have as men will always continue because we can't figure women out. We can't. I talk to my nephews. They're asking me for advice. I'm like, I, dude, I'm preaching to the choir, buddy. I don't know. If you guys are out there and you have some advice for uh, my dude Hoos, it's at Hoos M H U S E M. On Twitter and on Instagram also. Instagram's t- tougher, but Twitter. Yeah, Twitter. It, it, Instagram, it's the who's, because some dude has, has got, who's M? Yeah. Who okay. has who's M? I don't know. So on yeah, Instagram, it's the who's, and on Twitter, it's at who's M. Thank you very much for uh, being on this uh, edition of My Guy Mondays. Exactly. And 
I look forward to many more of our conversations, my dude. Thank you, Richards. Thank you. My Guy Monday. Joining me now is a talented filmmaker, an acclaimed music video director, and a film aficionado. His government name is Randall Thorne, but he's known to many people as RT. Welcome to My Guy Mondays. Yeah, man. Um, how many uh, how many movies did you see during the Toronto International Film Festival? I mean, it, this year was it was actually kind of weak. This year, like this was a weak year for me. Usually, I go, I see probably uh, I try to up aim for about twenty. 25 but this year I only saw 10 you saw 10 okay yeah so I was a little disappointed with myself so a lot of times the Toronto International Film Festival is like the indicator to uh, well first of all you get people get to see movies that they'll see later in the year mm -hmm. uh, which will be released by major film studios like gravity like the Wolf of Wall Street mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. 12 years a slave or it's 12 years a slave, 12 right? Years of slave right yeah, yeah. Uh, and then a bunch of uh, foreign films so of mm -hmm. the uh, of the 10 movies that you saw, mm -hmm. is there a movie or are there movies that you think that might have have like the early lead in like Oscar race stuff? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm, TIFF is like renowned for that. TIFF is like the festival that they that they say that starts that kind of Oscar buzz. It's like, because TIFF is like one of those festivals, it's, it's like, first of all, like the Toronto audience um, in the film world is like sort of like a, a sort of well-versed, film knowledge sort of audience. So they say that like TIFF is the first festival where like the gauge of an audience that's down with film is you know they're the ones that kind of set um set up films for being Oscar buzz worthy. So um so this and 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 in sort of traditional uh you know ways TIFF is sort of whoever wins the audience award which is like the most coveted award at TIFF that usually gets Oscar buzz and usually ends up being a front runner for the best picture. So this year, um, in previous years, it was like you know American Beauty won at TIFF. Um, so well, th this year, I guess a movie that you actually saw, yeah. which well, I guess that we can get into it, but it's, uh, it was Twelve Years a Slave. Twelve Years a Slave, yeah, won the Audience Award this year. So it's 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 right now, so it has a lot of Oscar buzz behind it, and I think it'll definitely be. Definitely be a Best Picture award. Definitely be like a contender. Oh yeah, for sure. Def definitely a contender for Best Picture. Who's in that movie? Um, uh, it was it was produced by Brad Pitt's thing. It was directed by a British filmmaker named uh, Steve McQueen. Um, and uh, and the lead actor ah, is I, I can't I can't pronounce his name. It's like it's Chip. Chitwell, I think it's Chitwell, uh, Edgefor. I, I know. I, we, it's yeah. very difficult for me to pronounce his name. Yeah, I should. We should be able to pronounce. Yeah, it was, his I was name. really ashamed. And you know what? I I met him. I met him, and I and I, I I didn't have to say his name when I met him. So I'm like, yo, man, you know, like your your performance is like unbelievable. And I was like, I know people say this to you or will say this to you. You know, like you definitely deserve to be nominated for an Oscar. But I was just like, but if you're not, I will go at the Oscar Academy with like a flamethrower. <laughs> he kind of chuckled and then you will exact thing. revenge through physical violence, some, some kind of violence. Yes, like, yes. Because I, I know that like when uh, when we were younger, when we were at Ryerson, you would come up with these like your scenarios of like how you're gonna kill some of your bad guys in your <laughs> movies, and I don't want to like yeah. they, they're they're extremely violent. Like the one that comes to mind is. Uh, <laughs> it's like you're gonna have a character. I think you're gonna have a cannibal. No, it was, I know you. One of them was gonna have a cannibal. <laughs> and you're, you're painting me to be some kind of no. But you just hey, listen. Like from, from like the Saw movies. Listen, the, the audience is now the audience is more uh, um, desensitized to like it's graphic violence. violence. Sure, sure they are, yeah, yeah, and like and I actually kind of want to talk about Grand Theft Auto sure. because yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I used to watch you play yeah. Grand Theft Auto for hours, and I was yeah. enjoying it as much as you were enjoying playing it. Yeah. But but let me get back to the carnage that would come from mm. your mind. Yeah. One one in particular, <laughs> and you had I remember it was like you had a character who was exacting revenge, and then he would have a sledgehammer. Right. And <laughs> He would like I I can't remember if you you know, if you, you know, you know what the scenario was right it's just because we were talking about like I can't remember why we were talking about this but it was just like you know we're talking about the horrors that actually happen in real life so like you know and this this scenario was just like you know what if somebody you know took your child and like 
you know, molested your child. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and to me, that's like got to be probably the, the, the worst, the worst yeah. thing that you can do to some. And, you know, you know, the effects that it has on somebody after they're molested. So that they've lived with that for their whole life. So my thing was always like, you know, to shoot a child molester and kill him. Is not good enough. No, that's too. You know it's getting I'm off saying? too easy. He's getting off too easy for that. You know what I mean? His victim is going to live with the horrors of what happened for the rest of their life. So I'm like, nah, man. This person should live with the horrors of what they've done for the rest of their life, <laughs> and their life should continue to go on. So heavily influenced by by you know Tarantino, Quentin Tarantino, who was uh, you know uh, you know laid the laid the foundation for modern day pop music being used in in torture scenes right from reservoir dog right you know what right I'm so so this is what i remember okay and this is like this is circa we were like in our second year and we we're just yeah we always talked about movies yeah so you have a guy okay so it's like the father you have him so he finds the 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 culprit yes he has a sledgehammer and yes. he's the he strategically breaks every bone in this guy's body yes and the human body has 209 bones so he's this guy's taking it like <laughs> Maybe not 209 shots because you can break multiple bones with one shot, yeah. but this guy's taking dozens of, of shots with yes. a sledgehammer. Yes, and, and, and purposely <laughs> avoiding vital um, organ areas, right? Right, so, so, not, he can, so that he can make sure that the guy doesn't actually expire. Yeah, bobby, bobby. so he doesn't die, yeah. yeah. And, and like the, the ribs would be the hardest one because there are 12 mm. ribs on each side, so yeah, you yeah, have to make, yeah. he'd have to make sure he didn't puncture the guy's lungs and right. it filled with blood. Those like, would be little little hammer hits. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Those would like, be if, like, like if the guy was working on an archaeological site. Right, right. Yeah, you know, right. And he's just trying to make sure that he doesn't damage any of the bones. <laughs> just, yeah, yeah. He's, he's somewhere in uh, friggin' Mesopotamia. <laughs> they don't even call it that area Mesopotamia anymore. He's somewhere like on a, on a, on a digging site in like Kenya. Yeah. They're like they're finding some bones and yeah, he's yeah. got one of those tools. So so while he, this th th while this dude is is crushing the bones of the culprit, this this person that committed this this this, this atrocity. Now let's let's make him sound horrible. This pervert. Of okay, society. He's, okay, he's a per, he's a yes, derelict this, of earth. Yes, and he's a disgusting human. So while this, this pederast, so, <laughs> <laughs> while he's being crushed, Lionel Richie's "Easy Like a Sunday Morning" <laughs> will be playing. Uh, in this this scene, this like the scene of sweet revenge, oh, but that's man. where your mind was. That's that, where your yes, I was. I am particularly demented. Yes. I don't. Okay, I don't even know how we got there because uh, <laughs> we were talking about the Toronto International Film Festival. But I know that. But when we had these fantasies about movies and stuff, right. that was those are some of the things that we used to talk about as demented, twenty one or twenty two year olds. Absolutely. Uh, probably, and it probably it, I know Tarantino was a big influence, and maybe just like Grand Theft Auto. Might as well get into Grand Theft Auto right, right. now. Um, uh, maybe that had some of the influence of it because I remember we used to play. It was PlayStation Two, right? And you had both Vice City and San Andreas, but I think yeah. it was Vice City that you played Vice more. Vice City than, was the one we played more, yeah, yeah. For sure. And I and so and I, and obviously you guys know that Grand Theft Auto Five just came out to like mm. huge numbers. It was, I think the production budget budget was two hundred sixty five million, yeah, and it, it sold eight hundred million in the first couple of days. Yeah, and a billion by the by the week. First week, yeah, a billion yeah. dollars in in revenue, which is just yeah. monstrous for. Yeah. A video game yeah. but I and and I I know I'm in the minority because I just enjoyed watching it and like you know there was like you know the the character would like go see like a prostitute and his money <laughs> his money would be draining but but more than that it was just the carnage yeah, yeah, yeah. that uh, that you could I mean, do you know the thing about Grand, Grand Theft Auto is that it, it just really it really lets you indulge in just I mean, like, you know, like they call it Vice City. It just allows you to indulge in all the sort of depraved, yes. horrible things yes. that as humans, like, <laughs> Very we kind of want to do sometimes, you know. But, I mean, you know, obviously we have moral code and, you know, and, and, and laws. And, but it's also, we, know, we could do we things just, that we don't even, like, not even that we've even thought of before, but, the, yeah. like, the perver like, it's like the most perverse things that we can do just yes. for our own entertainment. Like, yeah. like running over innocent, like, Absolutely. bystanders. Running people down. Beating yeah. people, random people up. Yeah, taking. Yeah, I mean, you know, the great thing. This is the funny thing. You know, like all, all these, all you hear all these politicians and, and these, <laughs> these parent groups you know, railing against video games like that. And I'm just like, nah, man. You know, the the beautiful thing about these games is that they allow us to engage in this activity through 
you know, a, a video game and our imagination. And we don't... But we're perverse, but, though. No, but, but, but so are a, a billion people that bought that. <laughs> you know yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Literally tens of yeah. millions of people that, that so, shelled out 70 bucks yeah, to be so, per perverse. Perverse, right? So, but, but this is the thing. It allows you to indulge in this stuff. And I think that's, that's genius. It, it, I don't think, you know, they, they're afraid that it influences people to do worse. I think it allows people to get this out of their system. Somebody comes mm, home, they get, yeah. they get, you know, they they have a horrible day at the office. Their boss is pissing them off, or whatever the deal, and you know they got cut off in traffic, and you know what I mean. These these people they want to let loose a little bit, and I think of a game like that really allows you to do horrible it, things. It's and then wake up in the morning <laughs> and be fine with it. It's quite the escape because you know yeah. that's you know we you know, we both work in television. And television, a lot of times, is an escape for people. Like yeah. people, you know, everyday life is stressful, mm -hmm. and you need to come home, kick your legs, kick your feet up, and just disappear yeah. it from like leave your world and just enter in another. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, just you know, just look, look at the the actual way that the world is structured. It's like people, what do people, do? people when they want to let loose, what do they do? Well, they want to hang out with people that they like. Number one, so you hang out with your friends. But what do you do when you hang out with those friends? I mean, you're ingesting poison into your body, you're, you're drinking, yeah, you're we smoking, are, we, we, you're doing, you know, if you're, if, you know, you're doing drugs, whatever the hell you're doing, you, you're, you're chasing down, you know, F females, females, whatever you want to do, you know what I mean? So there's all of these things that people do. Uh, some and, people work out. Some, some people, people live yes, a healthy yes, lifestyle. Sure they do. Sure yeah, they do. Sure. But. Most of us engage in, <laughs> in, Most in my dude, my self destructive yeah. activities yes, yes. to distract ourselves. Yes. So I think it's I think this stuff is healthy, man. I think you know and one of the characters in the new Grand Theft Auto is like he's like a tweaker, he's like a meth addict. Like really? you can actually play this dude and he's just he's just fed up. Like he's just crazy. You know what I mean? And you can play three characters in the game right, right. and you switch between these people. But one of them is just like a demented drug addict. <laughs> so you could just Probably go, based on something by Breaking Bad, Walter White gotta or something. Be, yeah. Gotta be based on like, you know, Jesse Pinkman. Or, or Je Jesse Pinkman, Pinkman. sorry, yeah, not Walter White. Something like that, but yeah. Uh, so, okay, so speaking of escapes, you saw, okay, so one of the 10 movies you saw was 12 Years a Slave. Was that the yes. movie you enjoyed the most? Um, Probably not the movie I enjoyed the most. Definitely, uh, I loved the movie. Very, t very hard movie to watch. Um, you know, obviously it deals with with, with uh, s slavery, and very difficult movie to watch, but very well executed. Great performances across the board. And um, Fassbender's in that one too, right? Fassbender Michael, Michael played, Fassbender. Yes, Ma Michael Fassbender plays. You know the the probably the the most evil uh, slave owner. Oh, is he like on film? He's just, oof. He's just a horrible. Yeah, I don't. Horror I'm, not, I'm not gonna. I, I didn't enjoy Django because it was so graphic and the language. And I just saw yeah, the Butler, is... and the Butler was hard. There's some hard parts to watch. Although the Butler is more of a, a sanitized version right. of of some of uh, you know black people's struggles in the yeah. last uh, two three generations. Yeah. I mean, Twelve Years a Slave is like harsh, harsh. Yeah. But like, it's different than Django because Django is. You know, this uh, Tarantino approached the subject matter with, uh, you know, he's always going to make it brutal, but then he's also sort of trying to mix in a little, of, uh, you know, pop culture, and he's trying to he, he's trying to make it into like sort of a genre flick, which is and he and he thing. tries to put like some humor in his he movies does, he too. He does, and... and this is not that kind of thing. This is like a serious, you know, watch this and understand what um, you know black people had to go through the experience of being a slave, which I thought was. It's actually very interesting in that respect. It's like it really puts you into the day to day living as a slave as opposed to just like this happened. Some people got lynched like, you know what I mean? It's really like how it was to live as a slave day to day. So the life that you go through. So it's very serious. It's a very good film, though. It's very solid and it will definitely be up for um, Best Picture for sure. Okay, well, so so that's not the movie you enjoyed the most. What right. what's the movie that you enjoyed the most? I would say it's a split. It's probably a split decision between um, a movie called uh, Prisoners by Denis Villeneuve, which is out right now. Oh, with Hugh Jackman, Hugh Jackman Gyllenhaal, Hall, and, and Terrence yeah. Howard. You got it. Oh, okay. You I want to see that movie. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I saw that solid, solid uh, film. I thought probably an Oscar contender. Really? As okay. Well, uh, for Best Picture, I thought Hugh Jackman was great in it. Like. 
Uh, I don't. I'm not like a Hugh Jackman fan. Like I'm not like a. But you saw Les Mis though. You saw Les Mis, didn't you? Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. He's yeah. intense. Like he's he a, he's is, a great yeah. performer. He great is, performer. He is, he is. He is. I mean, um, but in this, I, like I, I rate him, man. He's great. He was does great. he does he have a line like Mel Gibson and Random? Give me back my son. <laughs> does he, have he, does, he does have a little outburst. He's got a little outburst. Uh, you know, he's talking to Jake Gyllenhaal, and he's like, he's like, every day, every day, she's thinking about me, not you. <laughs> Who's gonna come and save her? Me. So, anyways, uh, he's talking about trying to go back and find his daughter. Right. Okay. Um, and uh, so, prisoners is a tie with prisoner. Yeah, prisoners is just super like Denis Villeneuve. Uh, oh, who did on uh, Sandy? Yes, did uh, yes. He and did that was Sandy. was that we, we, okay? So, so for for the audience at home, uh, Randall and I we went to uh, school with a you know a crew of dudes. We call ourselves the Hard Eight. And so every yeah. year the Hard Eight, there are eight of us. Maybe like uh, four to six of us. We we can't all get together anymore. But we have an an annual Oscar lunch. Yes, and now Ari is a part of this Oscar lunch. Yes. And was on Sandy was that like number? I feel like those in the top three. For you, one year, yeah, absolutely. like 2011 or 2012, was one yeah. year top film. Yeah, absolutely, without question. So this dude, Denis Villeneuve, delivers again. Yes, he does. Number one, like I mean, he is just—he's actually one of um, you know Canada's best directors, in my opinion. He is uh, comes out of comes out of um, you know uh, Quebecois, the Quebecois. Um, dude, French, I was just French speaking French, French to a girl like this weekend, oh, and yeah. and. Uh, uh, and they, they really appreciate it. Like, yeah, no, she, and she's from Montreal, like heavy French. And I just, you know, whenever I meet French girls and I'm with Ari, I'm like, all right, just talk to these girls. Yeah, Cause yeah, Ari, yeah. Ari can speak Ari French, always knows that, yeah. but I'll just pull out, like, I can go maybe two exchanges. Like, and I always say, uh, je peux pas parler français. Um, uh, je suis terrible à parler français. Oui. And they're like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, and then I, and then I, and then I say this. So, so the first line was, I can't speak French very well. Or I speak terrible, terribly, and then I say, "Mais je vais essayer à parler français avec toi." They appreciate the effort, right? So then, so the second line was, "But I'm going to try to speak French to you." Right. So they do appreciate the. the I think uh, they really do appreciate that. How good is your French? My French is not that. I I, I should be a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. You I, took I, you took yeah, French took, immersion. I, took, me. I was in French immersion. My mom, my mom. So was put I. Me in French immersion, and uh, I just you know. When you're, t when you're, oh man, when you're, but you don't say like Pomplamoose and Bibliotech, do you? Because no, no, those, no, those are like the two English. Those are like the two French words that I know. I know, English I, know I know. I know pronunciation a little bit, but I just, I, I just never. I didn't apply myself in those classes or just, any class. You didn't. You true. also didn't apply yourself very in phys ed. True. Very true. Very true. <laughs> I did some pole vaulting. I did some pole, <laughs> pole vaulting. Yeah, in the Nintendo game, track and field. That's the way you did pole vaulting in. Do you guys remember? And did you okay when you played Nintendo? What that track and field game specifically? Oh yeah. Did you do the thumbnail, oh, yeah, or, or the did thumbnail. you do the, the the you you put your finger oh, no, under the no, part of your didn't shirt? Work. That still didn't work because that would that would raw up your your finger no matter what because the buttons on the Nintendo weren't they were like the opposite of what what's is it concave? Concave is in, so convex is out. Okay, so they on the first original Nintendo, yeah. the NES controller, they were they were concave. No, they weren't in. They, they were, were out. Dude, no, no, on a, on a Super Nintendo, they had con convex. Convex, they were rounded. They were rounded. No, okay, but but concave means like like in. Dude, it's they like, were. No, That's they weren't. No, yes, unless you were. wore down your listen, friggin' joystick. Listen. Listen, let me tell you, any any of you listeners out here who used to have a Super, uh, not a Super Nintendo. No, a, a Nintendo, at the NES, buttons were up. Tell this guy, send this guy a tweet, Ari, and let him know. Ari will the, know, the, Ari the, will know. Ari will send me a text nah, uh, tomorrow and be like, they were, concave means this and convex, because I always screw up on these freaking podcasts and Ari always connect, connect, correct me. <laughs> the point is, is that you couldn't just rub your finger back and forth on them to, to do this, because what he's talking about is, in track and field, to make your guy run fast. Yeah. You had to hit the A button and the B button like alternatively to really quickly to make them go. Yeah, to so, make his legs fire. Correct. And, right. So so you couldn't do that on the original NES controller because they were concave. No, that's not buttons, true, bro. man. So you had to use your I, I finger. Think I, you had me, to I, use I, your nail. You had to use your nail on your on your finger and rub it back and forth so that you weren't you know, incurring uh, surface damage to your to your fingertips to do it unless you had the big giant. Um, joystick, which had which had you know you could just turn the turbo on and then you and then you just win anything, but yeah. Okay, so what? 
Do we I, have I, it wrong here? Is it no? Well, con- concave is concave. is 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 like a bent. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Inwards well, and convex bulges outward. Yeah. Okay. So on. For, okay. So what I used to do is you put your 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 index finger under part of your t-shirt, like at the bottom part of your t-shirt. So that you would you would have less friction to rub between the A button and the B button back and forth, left to right, left to right, left to right, to make your character move faster. And I don't even know if there was a, was it a pole ball game? I know there was javelin yeah, hurdles. Pole yeah, it's pole ball. It was, it was all the track and field, yeah, yeah. all the track and field uh, yeah. events. Okay, so prisoner is tied with we'll get and yeah. I and I do want to get around to you telling your Brad Pitt story before you get out of here. Um, okay, so prisoners and what, so prisoners, great yeah. film, tied with um, a Canadian film. Uh, the name of it was um, uh, rhymes with uh, rhymes with ghouls, rhymes with ghouls. That's what it's called. Yes. Oh, I thought and, you were uh, being like a like what rhymes with <laughs> vagina. <laughs> yeah, no, it was called rhymes with ghouls. A uh, very talented young uh, new filmmaker, uh, First Nations filmmaker um, named uh, Jeff Barnaby, and uh, just a dope. Just like it, it, it was sort of a crime thriller. Um, the, uh, that took took place was like uh, some First Nations people, but it was dope. It was it was it had a lot of style to it. Oh, cool! It had a lot of balls. So to it's it, set, you know? in yeah, set in Canada. Yes, because movies that are set in Canada, we don't really think are that cool. That's what I'm saying, right? And 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 this is the you know this is the the unfortunate thing, um, you know that uh, we just don't see a lot of uh, uh, Canadian filmmakers with. Um, you know who appre- how, uh, let's put it this way who appreciate you know style and and fun and uh and and got a little balls to what they do you know so except kick ass kick ass was cool and that was set in toronto Sure, sure, sure. Or uh, but, no, but, uh, what's the one? Michael Sarah, whatever, against the world. Oh, um, that's set in uh, Toronto, Scott isn't it? Pilgrim. Scott Pilgrim. Sorry, that's yeah, yeah, the one yeah. that's set in Toronto. Yes, Kick yeah. ass, which is fil- filmed again, here. With you know Scott Pilgrim, you know I have my issues with it, but it it had a lot of style to it, and you just uh, my point is is like it, Canadian films in general or films that are set here or whatever um, or definitely made by Canadians. They just um, that seems to be something that like. The filmmakers shy away from. They're like, oh, well, we're is not the interested. Aesthetics? Yeah, just aesthetic and just the style. Like you know, you just don't see a lot of this. You know, the, you you see a lot of serious filmmakers come out. Like you know, say serious, and I sit up. But it's just like <laughs> serious filmmakers come out of Canada. You know, like uh, Sarah Pauly and yes, uh, yeah, Adam and uh, Adam McGoyan. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and so you know, they, they tackle good subject, like solid subject matter, and they want they really want you to think about. It. But you don't see a lot of young filmmakers coming out with a lot of style. You know, like some Guy Ritchie type style, or some right, Tarantino's right. type. You know, clever dialogue, or you know what I mean. So that's where you come in, RT. Well, that's that's definitely the 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 the, the thing that I want to do with my with with my films. And but, uh, dismembering, this guy, this guy, dismembering yeah, people, dismembering too. people, and <laughs> sledgehammering their their and always having their the organs uh, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, and always having it juxtaposed with something light and of course. like I feel like there's you're gonna have a you're gonna you would be awesome is you're gonna have like this amazing action sequence where like bullets are just ripping through bodies and stuff set to the Sesame Street. <laughs> theme song sunny days and just slow motion just a <laughs> ripping up a neighborhood yeah. or whatever so but yes jeff barnaby solid solid filmmaker and, rhymes uh, with ghoul rhymes with ghouls yes anymore? solid solid film and i, I hope that it, it gets a release here in in, in canada so one night i'm uh, i get a text from rt he's like hey i'm at the thompson come by the thompson this is this is the beginning of the toronto international film festival thompson hotel is a nice venue in the city and um and during tiff like the hotels pe- people like hang at the hotels and they're like there are parties there and stuff so i'm I'm there with a few friends of mine and we we get to the thompson and uh rt had, you just finished seeing the movie 12 years of F- uh, a slave yeah we saw the premiere, and, saw, the premiere. saw the premiere yeah. and then uh you got rumblings that the after party would be at the thompson hotel correct the the one thing about the 12 years of slave premiere was that they had the whole cast there and you know, and and Steve McQueen was there, the, the director, and everything. So when you see something like that yeah, at one of these premieres, it it's got it's got to mean that they're gonna be they're gotta be partying because they're not gonna fly in twelve celebrities plus the director and da 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 da, and then everybody's just gonna go to the hotels that night and just take off the next day. It's just not gonna happen. So so I'm like, they gotta be partying somewhere. I just wonder where that might be. So I started like. You know, texting around, seeing if you know anybody had heard anything, and actually, this this, this dude that I was hanging with, 
He's like, what are you just, uh, what are you, what are you looking for? I'm like, oh, I'm just looking to go party somewhere, but I'm just trying to find out. I just went to go see the premiere of Twelve Years Late, and he's like, oh, uh, do you, you want to go over to like, we're gonna go over to the Thompson. I was like, what if they're gonna go to the Thompson? So I texted around, and a buddy of mine got back and said, yeah, you know, I was like, uh, what's going on at the Thompson tonight, or whatever, and he's like, uh. Nothing right now. I was like, what does that mean? And then he's like, well, we might close down a little bit. I'm like, if they're going to close down, then that means something's going down there, right? So so me, this guy that I just met, and like a bunch of his friends, and, and the girl that I was with, and uh, um, and I told Devo, but then we lost Devo on, on route. So we went over there, and uh, we get there, and, you know, we... You know, we we get there before they're ready to close down, so we we pop upstairs. Luckily, so there's a there's a rooftop patio at the Thompson Hotel. Yeah. It's like the 16th floor. It's got a pool. It's a beautiful spot in Toronto. Yeah. So uh, my man Kev, who works there, and and uh, and Jad, they uh, they you know they they let us pop up there, and uh, I said, you know, um, we're gonna go up there and say what's up to the peoples. So we go up there. We're just up there. It's it's chill. It's nothing crazy going on. And then uh, probably about 10 minutes after we got there, all of a sudden, we just, we hear that, you know, I hear rumbling, some people are talking, like, oh, it's here, so it's here. So we're like, okay, what's that? And then uh, we turn and we look, and you just see, you know, the 12 cast members all walk in um, from 12 Years a Slave, including Brad Pitt, um, Fastbender, you know, uh, and, and Steve McQueen. And, and, um, and so Chiwetel, was, yeah. Yeah, and Chiwetel, so... So it was pretty crazy. So then they they roll in, and then I'm like, wow, okay, well. So how how are people reacting to like seeing Brad Pitt? Because you can't just see Brad Pitt. Yeah, yeah. He's I one mean, of the kings of I Earth. Mean, I mean, literally everybody just kind of turned and stopped doing whatever they're doing, just stared as they walked in. You know what I mean? And did then, they go to the patio, or did they stay in they the stayed inside? In, they stayed on the inside. But what happened is, is um, in in ultra quick fashion. There was like barriers sort of made for the inside and then also for the patio. So like the patio furniture was kind of shoved and pushed to create like a wall. So nobody could so access could, them. Could access them. Right. So uh, and then so uh, my man Jad was he was sort of like tasked with sort of you know uh, blocking off uh, the section to get to them. So I just rolled over to him like, hey man. To who, to who? Jad. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and then he's like, "Yo, what's going on, RT?" And then I was like, oh, "I'm chilling, man." I was like, uh, "I'm like, yo, dude, um, Steve McQueen, the director, just uh, you know, he invited me to come say what's up to him." So he's like, "Oh, that's cool. <laughs> cool, 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 all right." He's like, "Is it just you?" And I'm like, "Well, I got a couple of girls with me, but he's like, I can't, I can't. He's like, yeah, I, tell you, I can't do the girls, man. I can't do." That. I'm like, "Come on, man. They're not gonna care about the girls, man. In fact, they they probably want the girls over there, man." So he's like, yeah, "It's just just you for right now." So I'm like, "All right, cool." So I just rolled in, and I mean. I mean, I had enough. I had liquid courage in me now. Okay, right. Right. So, so now I'm just like, I mean, you got You got to say. I mean, if you had a party with those dudes, and you have a chance to say what's up, you just got to go say what's up. Because it's like, when are you ever gonna say what's up to these guys? You know what I mean? So, I just rolled up to each and every one of them. I was just like, yo, man. You know, I, I went up to Steve McQueen. I'm like, this film is incredible, and it's just amazing that you know you did it and whatever, whatever. He's like, oh, thank you. And I was like, I'm a big fan from you know from Hunger to Shame now to this is incredible, whatever. And then I rolled over to, to Chitwell and uh, I told him that. I told him about how I was gonna kill people <laughs> if you didn't get nominated. And then uh, and then and then, and then Brad Pitt's there, and I'm just like, you gotta say what's up to Brad Pitt. You have to say, well, you just I, gotta say what's up with, if you can get to Brad Pitt, you gotta was, say what's up. The thing is, he was very accessible. He was just dan he was just dancing with like some girl, and you know, he was, Brad Pitt time. was dancing. Yeah, yeah. Like a like a two step or like yeah, full two, like oh, no, was a, he wasn't was popping and lock, no, no, locking. No, 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 it was a two step. It was a two step. It was definitely a two step. And he was kind of just laughing with this girl, and then so I just went up to him and I just said, I was like, hey man, you're just incredible. And he's like, oh, cool, thank you, man. And I was like, no, no, no. You're incredible. <laughs> <laughs> and he started laughing. He did his he did his uh his Brad Pitt laugh. <laughs> and then uh and then I was like I was like, No, but like uh, seriously you're incredible because you know, like you he produced Twelve Years a Slave, his company Plan B. And I'm like, It's it's amazing that your company is seeking out projects like this and just, you know, taking them on and making them happen. You know what I mean? And he's like, Oh, I appreciate that, thank you. So and then I just left him alone. I'm like, I don't wanna I'm not gonna be a groupie and hang around with them. So, but uh, it was it was dope, man. It was crazy. And then and then I circled back around, went and snuck 
each one of my girls in, you know, so they could have a chance to... To say hi to Brad Pitt? Yeah, they didn't, though, but, uh, you know, they kind of just stood there and looked at him. But <laughs> I feel like everybody kind of stood there and looked at him. Without a doubt, yeah. Yeah, so, doubt. so while that was happening, we're downstairs. We arrive a little late after Brad Pitt and the whole cast of 12, seven, 12 Years a Slave show yeah. up, and they're just on lockdown. Yeah. Like we we normally have no problems like just the ordinary blue collar regular dudes have no problem going to the yeah. Thompson and going up to the rooftop and yeah. spending money up there and stuff. But then when like one of the kings of Earth show up, <laughs> then like they just lock down venues. It wasn't. I mean, it's it's. I mean, and not even to say because like you know, you know, I'm sure this guy's gonna try to backtrack and say, but people know you. So when you go to some places, a lot of people, a lot of people are very cool with you. How about that? You have a lot of friends in a lot of places. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. So, so, you know, you know, obviously when I texted you, you were like, oh, okay, cool, cool. You came over and then th they had locked everything down. And this is how serious the lockdown was. It's like, I was like, okay, cool. Well, you know, if you're downstairs, I'm like, I'm not doing anything up here. I'm just going to come down and we'll just go party somewhere else. So I go downstairs and Steve McQueen, the director, jumps in the elevator with me and you know and then he's going down i'm like oh you guys leaving and he's like no 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 i just gotta go i gotta go see something see about something so we go downstairs and then that's when i see you and then you know some of the guys who were who were you know the security guys are blocking the door and steve mcqueen goes up and he's like um this woman is and they're blocking this woman from getting up and he's like this woman is my publicist she's brad pitt's publicist she's you know michael fassbender's publicist she has to get in and they're like no what yeah oh wow i didn't know it was like that yeah. so i was like what and and so then i i was like tapping my guy i'm like dude this is the director of the film the reason that you have everybody up there is this guy and probably the reason that all of this is here is because of this woman <laughs> like you know what i mean yeah. like she's probably the one that organized the whole damn trip for them to come here and you know whatever so and then uh and then did they let her up eventually yes oh, okay. yeah, yeah yeah so i kind of felt it like in my own little in my own little triumph i kind of felt like i helped <laughs> out because like they listened to me for a second and they're like oh okay okay all right we'll work this out and then i was like yes and then I left. But, oh, so. Nice work. Well, you got yeah. uh, you got that lady to some some I, free I, champagne I and got her from, some free champagne. And yeah. uh, and she, I'm sure she enjoyed her night. And they <laughs> and 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 you celebrated your little victory with us by we indulged in some we did. some some sh some spirits, if you yes. will. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Yeah. Uh, I enjoyed this Fun conversation night. as always. Uh, speaking with you, RT. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for coming by, my guy Mondays, and I'll have to get you back very soon. To talk about the random things that we talk about. For sure. Directed by RT on Instagram and Twitter is mm -hmm. where you find him. And thank you very much, sir. Much appreciated, bro. My Guy Monday. My Guy Mondays. My long-term collaborator, my producer, Dave Crixt. My man D, welcome. Thank you, my guys. Today yeah. I just sent you a my guy. Have you told people yet what the, a my guy is? No, I don't. Well, when we when we did our podcast, I'm not sure if that came up. But uh, my man D and I have this game where we'll see because we, we travel a lot, and uh, people watching is one of the greatest activities ever invented. So uh, there's a term. Actually, the term. Um, actually, my friend Nigel first said my guy in like grade 11 but it wasn't to the same context as we use it now so we play this game and when we see people out that are kind of eccentric but sort of awesome in their authenticity we're like that guy is so amazing you want to claim him as your own guy so we'll call that guy a uh, my guy so uh we like you know like short people short dudes are are, are great Oversized guys are great, but they have the special characteristics, a special haircut that hair, just yes. only you have. Yeah, or a hat, or right. certain glasses, or beards are great. Clothing, clothing. So yeah. that yeah, when when someone is, they have that be a little bit eccentric, but awesome at the same time. Right, and, and there are certain rules you can't claim people who who might be sick or homeless or anything like that. Yes, but today I sent Cab a my guy of a guy uh, who looks very much like Santa Claus, <laughs> who's only wearing red and black. On a low rider bike with a helmet and amazing sunglasses. <laughs> he is my guy. He is he was a great guy. I saw that and I gave you the like the bah ha ha. Like it was a legit I laughed out loud. Yeah. And I am I'm, I'm a I'm a one hundred percent a ha 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 guy, as are you. Yes. 
um, and we enjoyed it. So we've been laughing and also marveling recently at the level of uh, creativity that two late night hosts that we really enjoy, Jimmy Kimmel and Jimmy Fallon, have been their their producers and the writers have been putting out the past couple of months. And I just and and you know we are. These guys are just leading the charge right now, and uh, I just want to have a conversation about the the ones that really have really um, spoken to us, and then just inspired us to try to do our own cool, funny, entertaining videos because that's what we do at TSN. Right, I, and I think that when it comes to guys like that, especially in television, we look at them for inspiration. Um, definitely, I'm not saying we'd ever ever on their level, but Me to say that what they're doing is so creative. And so, you know, funny, like legitimately funny. It inspires us uh, to do better stuff. So right now, I think I, I was, we're Who's winning. Who do you think is winning? Oh, man, I guess we're start with that right out of the gate. If I, you have to pick one right now, Kimmel versus Fallon. Yeah. I, oh, man, I guess Fallon's winning, I guess, like marginally. But this this Kanye West thing with Jimmy Kimmel has been. It's been pretty awesome, like that. Just, just for the entertainment of it. But I, I suppose, Fallon, Fallon is, you know, because here's the thing that Fallon has, he has Mariano Rivera in his bullpen, which is Justin Timberlake, yep. and Justin Timberlake. It seems like he makes like a monthly or a, every three weeks he makes an appearance on Jimmy Fallon's show, and it's awesome. It's yeah. just, it's just brilliant. Kimmel, Who do you think it's Matt Damon? He can, yeah, but he doesn't. But he doesn't go to you know that he doesn't go to enter Sandman as much as no, Fal Fallon does for for uh, Timberlake. Yeah, listen, Kimmel's also competing against directly against Leno and Letterman right now. That's his competition. Which I don't even know if they're in the conversation anymore. Yeah, so I think it's actually going to come, you know, to fruition when Fallon moves to Leno's spot and they're up against each other directly at eleven oh five. And then Jimmy's going to have to raise his game because I do think that Fallon's winning right now. Partly because of what he's doing. Wait, with... but which Jimmy? Because they're both Jimmy's. No, Fallon's winning right now. So you think Jimmy Fallon's going to have to raise his game once he no, goes to... No, Kimmel's going to raise his game. J Jimmy Kimmel has to raise his game. Okay. Yeah, yeah. With more star power. The ideas that Kimmel has is unbelievable, but the performances on Fallon, they're unbeatable. Yeah, okay, that's a great point. I mean, so speaking of performances, I mean... One of the great ones recently he did was Blurred Lines, like that uh, unplugged version where he had Robin Thicke and he had The Roots perform Blurred Lines on like little kid instruments. Yeah. And then he had the Sesame Street cast do the Sesame Street theme song, which is just also just brilliant, just great well, entertainment. So first of all, he's got The Roots. So The yeah. Roots are always there. Yeah. And we've loved The Roots for for a long time. And they were like Jay-Z's backup band for his Unplugged. They are so talented. Right, the MTV Unplugged, Every time yes. he wants to do anything musical, he's got The Roots. That's an <laughs> Which is such an advantage for performance, but but the one that I'm still stuck on is the lip syncing contest. The epic lip sync contest, which you just sent me the other day. I woke up to that text. You're like, you have to watch this. So it was uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Stephen Merchant uh, and Jimmy Fallon doing this like nine minute clip. You got if you haven't seen it, just YouTube it, and it's awesome because they put so much effort into it like Stephen Merchant for sure practice at home he and he did uh, single ladies and uh, what was the other he did Fresh Prince yes he did. Yeah, the Fresh Prince uh, oh uh, boom boom shake shake the room which is an odd choice because it's not even like the Fresh Prince theme song it's not parents just don't understand no, it's, 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 it's like it's not summertime no yeah it's not summertime which is a, a huge it, it's boom boom shake shake the room <laughs> Which is uh, awesome. And he, I, he's so funny. He is very funny. And he's like he's like six six, kind of awkward looking. So him singing these two like well, one's an R and B okay. song and one's a like a woman's anthem and the other one's just like this hip hop if you song. Haven't seen a six foot six, six, uh, excuse me. A six <laughs> foot English dude doing the single lady dance. You haven't seen anything. It's, it's great. And then so then uh so I guess we'll just stay on Fallon. And then like the hashtag video he had right. with Justin so then, Timberlake. So when I sent you that, you're like, oh, I saw the hashtag. I'm like, this isn't the hashtag. The hashtag one is, like, I've heard so many people reference it. It's like Saturday Night Live. Everybody's referencing it. Like, um, did you see the, the Kimmel hash or the Fallon hashtag? It was hashtag awesome. <laughs> yes, yeah. People include. Uh, do you include Do you include hashtags in your text messages to other people? Just you. <laughs> yeah, probably I think you. I do it to you yeah. as well, yeah. Or maybe, maybe uh, to DJ, I send hashtags every once in a while. Um, but yeah, but gen but so so again, this is another video that's just awesome. They're just it's like the absurdity of using hashtags in 
real life conversations. You know, I've never thought about it. If you send a hashtag as a text, does it create a link? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, an at if an at mentioned might. Like if I just sent you like we're getting off chat. I'm such a nerd. I just <laughs> <laughs> like if I just sent you a text message at can Nike. We, can we test it? Sure. I'm sure. testing it right now. As we have this conversation, I'm going to say at hashtag my guys. So, <laughs> so Jimmy Fallon has the performance category on lock. Yeah, I mean, he's winning a performance. Him and Justin Timberlake have the history of rap. I believe they've done four volumes, which is amazing. Um, and the answer is no, by the way. And the answer is no. Yeah. But but okay. So but Jimmy Kimmel. On the other side, uh, he Ideas. like he pranked the I don't want to say the world, but North America with that epic twerk fail video. And I don't Brilliant. think I don't know if Fallon's had one of those yet. Not that he pranks people, but I don't know if there's been a Fallon video. And not not I mean, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but one doesn't come to mind in the last six months. I mean, one doesn't come to mind in the last year. That like that Fallon's had that's like whoa I know you know I guess the history of raps are those have been huge yeah and the football the history the evolution of the touchdown dance the the performances they've gone viral if that's the word we're using it's just the idea of what Kimmel did is so ingenious he didn't promote it on his show he didn't tweet it out and say oh this is so funny yeah they just did it and uploaded it and saw what happened and it was just organic they and they did it about two months before. And I think what really helped was like, what probably helped it explode was like Sunday was the MTV Awards, and then by like Monday or Tuesday this video had just was like on fire. Like everybody was talking about this right, epic Miley twerk. Cyrus twerked. She at, so that was just a happy circumstance. Yes, a and, and it worked. Yes, and it worked out. So I, I believe that video has like 11 million views or something. And then the 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 explanation. I'm gonna check it right now, but. That. So, so this is this is the key here. So Kimmel's got this understanding of YouTube and how to interact with this audience that is unlike anyone else. So as Cab checks on this, we are looking at some videos before of the YouTube contest that he used to do. He did the one where give eat all your kids Halloween candy and then tape them. Yeah, that, that that was brilliant. So so the 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 twerk it says worst twerk ever. So worst twerk fail ever. Girl catches fire. 13 million views and then Jimmy Kimmel, Kimmel reveals that it's a prank that has 16 million views but you're what you mentioned what's like and I know I, I think we share like every day we're in conversation and we're sharing like these great videos it's just like inspiration for us to step to raise our game to try to you know to get to that level Jimmy will tell the audience hey this is my idea this is a YouTube challenge I want you to film your kids or your mother uh, and you know for this one that Dave just brought up you tell them that you ate their Halloween candy, and one of the videos has 42 million views, and the other one has 27 million views. Like, Kimmel comes strong with these uh, YouTube challenges. And interacts with the fan. We've tried stuff like that with Twitter and, and the street hockey and stuff like that. But to actually get people to submit videos, that's a whole different level. And it's, and, the, the, and who, you know, who wins is the audience wins. Yes, they do. Even though they're going head to head and like, Hey, Kimmel might take an L here. Fallon might take a, you know, get the W here. It's the audience. Like right. we are winning every night or every week when they release one well, of these some people amazing. Some say this is the golden era of television. Like the best TV shows are on TV that have ever been put on. Uh, and and maybe this is a new level for late night television as well. Although I'm not feeling Arsenio so much right now. I've only seen, uh, yeah, I've only seen a couple of interviews, and it feels like Arsenio is. Arsenio like 91. Yeah, just the same thing. And if you're gonna come out, if you're Arsenio, you have to come out with Eddie Murphy. You you have to play in the landscape which exists now, which are digital. You have to have your skits, your digital right. shorts, or your your skits or your shorts have to be like on point because Kimmel and Found for our generation. Right. Conan started it. I mean, he really was doing things that I think started to get picked up by YouTube and doing those little videos and skits and stuff. Even here in Toronto with it, with the with the Maple Leafs when he tried out into the practice with the giant, um, he had the giant helmet. I don't think I saw good. that one. I I remember well, when Google he that, but I was just saying before we started, he uh, just joined LinkedIn. Conan did, <laughs> and he wants to be the biggest influencer on LinkedIn. So if you ask him to be your LinkedIn contact, he will accept you. He accepted me, <laughs> and he's awesome because. Some of his expertise or his skill sets include blaming his father and Microsoft Excel. 
That's <laughs> great. <laughs> Which are skills that are useful in 1992. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, you can still blame your father. Yeah, I, I suppose. I suppose you can. Yeah. I think um, the first. What like I think the first sketches that really uh, that Conan uh, that really helped Conan and helped sort of the digital short era were the Triumph the Insult comic dog Robert Smigel yeah Robert Smigel was recently on uh, Bill Simmons podcast it was awesome but Triumph the Insult comic dog was I mean it precedes it predates YouTube um, but those are I mean I guess in the era that we watch TV you couldn't you had to like just wait till that. That was so funny that I I got the DVD set of the Triumph. So did I. Yeah. You may have given it to me as a, as a birthday present, actually. Like, but so funny just to watch that. His streeters with people. The one at the Star Wars. Yeah, the Star Wars lineup. The oh. two the two dog show videos. Amazing stuff. Were were unbelievable. He was even on like Hollywood Squares. Do you remember that one? Yeah. He was, he was a square. And interviewing the. Um, Bon Jovi behind the oh, stage. Oh, yes. <laughs> he went to a Bon Jovi concert. That's right. Just insulting them to their face. It was terrific. So where, okay, so where do you have Conan now, though? Like, Kim, Kimmel, do you have, so Kimmel and oh, Fallon. Conan now, it's like, uh, see, this, this is weird because it now kind of gets out of the late night talk. If we're talking digital video and, like, what you're watching that's produced by good people, so we probably have Fallon and Kimmel running neck and neck. But then you've got... Well, we used to have the digital shorts in Saturday Night Live. Not really have any. We don't really have that anymore. But Funny or Die. Right. Funny or Die is still up there. Funny or Die is definitely, it's, it speaks to the millennials. It speaks to our generation. And you send me, again, this is what DK will, DK knows I wake up about 10, 1030. Usually at 1030 every day. <laughs> so I'll wake up with a, a, like a few text messages, like some work stuff, and then I'll just get a, a like a link to like you have to watch like this. Like must watch. Yeah. <laughs> so DK just sent me, woke me up the other day with uh with uh Between the Two Ferns. Right. And Zach Galifianakis interviews Justin Bieber. Yeah. And it's unbelievable. And I give Justin Bieber full credits, a bunch of points for being for being the butt of the jokes and yeah. having some self-deprecation through Zach Galifianakis is just ripping him up in this. Every single thing you've heard about Justin Bieber re recently that was brought up. The peeing in the bucket was brought up. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, His what, haircuts. Yeah, the, the various haircuts. <laughs> it was. It's great. You guys have to go on Funny or Die. But that's a great point, though. For like, so Funny or Die is like, is and, and college college humor is another one. One of those uh, providers of like these digital shorts that are just taking our attention away but okay but in the late nights in the late night space Fallon and Kimball neck and neck so then you have so then there's Conan Letterman Leno Arsenio and then in six months we'll have Seth Meyers see right. Seth Meyers is gonna change I, and I, I didn't even put in Craig Ferguson because I or jo George Lopez why do you when you put George I don't Lopez? think I think the George Lopez show is not on TV anymore <laughs> George Lopez he's great you said oh now listen you know what we're missing personally that that we're not talking about and I, I didn't bring this up before the only one that I actually watch every night John Stewart yeah it's the daily show it's different because you won't get as many skits or, or, or things that appear on YouTube but just as a daily watching experience for me it's number one see I think <sighs> John I'm, Stewart is just so funny he himself. is really funny He's really funny, and I, I mean, and like, and when he's on the O'Reilly Factor or Bill O'Reilly is on his show, that's like must see TV. Perfect, yeah, that's the interview you want to see because he's he's funny and he's smart. Letterman can still interview with the best of them, and if Bill Murray's on, that's a must watch for you. Yeah, I like uh, yeah, because Let Letterman doesn't care, and Bill Murray doesn't. He doesn't seem to care either, and he does all these like interesting kind of like eccentric things, like show up to like a flag football game. Or... You saw what he did. Like so, Bill Murray's always been the first guest on Letterman, no matter what he. You know, when he first started his show on NBC, he was he was the first guest. Oh, okay. I when he came to CBS, he was his first guest, and so now they had. Um, uh, I guess it was an anniversary of the Letterman show. He's like, well, since you moved here, well, you know, when I was here for the first time, I buried some stuff. And, and Letterman's like, what do you mean I buried, you buried stuff? He's like, I, I, I want to give it to you now. I buried kind of like a time capsule. So oh my gosh, this Bill sounds Murray awesome. then throws the chairs off the set and starts, gets a, like a, a chainsaw and starts sawing into the, <laughs> the actual set underneath the chairs. And then at first he realizes he picked the wrong chair. <laughs> <laughs> so 
so then he goes to the other chair. Now he's ripping up Letterman's set, and then he pulls out a box. Now, obviously, this is all set up, but it's so amazing. That is awesome. Uh, in that in that Robert Smigel podcast on Bill on the Bill Simmons conversation, he said Bill Murray is the funniest person he's ever met in the room. Like in the room, funny. And he's got. I think you really like because it it's just it's just a bunch of Saturday Night Live stuff, and there's some Conan stuff. It's all the stuff that we love growing up yeah. watching uh, on TV. It's like he's it's like right in our wheelhouse. I like when Simmons gets into that kind of thing. Yeah. So so uh, Seth how, Myers. Seth Myers. How do you um and and and, and, and like Seth Myers has the um, the uh, benefit of being backed by Lauren Michaels, and Lauren Michaels so does. So did Conan. So did. Uh, so did Jimmy Fallon. Fallon. And you can't you can't really lose in TV with in the movies maybe but not in TV you know if it's a Lauren Michaels vehicle you can't lose yeah because he sends all the talented people with you so here's the thing though Seth Meyers is not good at impressions Jimmy Jimmy Fallon is amazing he does amazing Neil Neil Diamond mm -hmm. he does I mean and he did the, the Bruce Springsteen I think he did he did Adam Sandler no not Neil Diamond excuse me Neil Young he does. Bruce Springsteen, Neil Young, yeah. Yeah, yeah. the uh, whip my hair. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> really good. It's, uh, it's got to be different. Yeah, it's going to be different. I, I don't know. What and Kimmel, Kimmel doesn't do impressions either. So Kimmel's very much a, a straight man. And I think that's Seth, with Seth Myers, that's kind of his thing. He's like a straight I, man I think too. Well, Seth Myers isn't a performer like Jimmy is. Jimmy Fallon. Oh, correct. Yeah, correct. He's more He's more kind of the, of the mold of the Jimmy he's Kimmel mold. He's a sports mold. dude. He is a sports dude. He is a sports but, dude. We saw him hosting the ESPYs, and he did a good job. Yeah, the, the, both those monologues were good. And I, I think what you'll see in the beginning is like a lot of the SNL cast that he's friends with come out and support him and be in skits and stuff like that. Will Ferrell always comes out. Will oh, Ferrell's so good. And the, and the thing about the Seth, Seth Myers, and I'll close that, that part on that, is, is the, he, he had maybe the greatest White House correspondence dinner um, yeah. bit ever. Not bit, but like uh, speech. Right. He was unbelievable. If you, I know you guys have seen it, but if you haven't, if you, just, it's a good, it's a solid twenty minutes. It's like it's basically a roast, and he kills Donald Trump. Him and President Obama kill Donald Trump, and it's just amazing. And follow him on Twitter because he's got good tweets. He's a, he's a good he's a good tweeter. Yeah, it's it's just is it Seth Myers twenty one or just Seth Myers? Uh, I don't know, but he when he tweets during sporting events is the best. Okay, lastly. Um, Give me your. I I don't watch this show, but I know a huge Are we portion. Get into this? I just want you just a little bit. So, but you, I guess you, you can't spoil it because some people no, will I'll be. I'll just say this, and I tweeted it out too. I mean, you're, you're, he's at, and you can follow my man D at my man DK on Twitter and Instagram and Vine. It's all at my man DK. One word, no underscores. So, Cab was was gonna ask me about Breaking Bad because I just finished watching the end of Breaking Bad, and um. You know, the Twitterverse is right now going crazy about it. You're right. And people are saying whether they liked it or not. And it was good. I, I have no complaints. The only thing that I noticed, and, and I tweeted about it, is um, throughout the, the show, Walter White, who's the main character, had a lawyer. His lawyer's name, Saul Goodman. Saul Goodman. Wait. Oh, what you used to say. Which I always used to say. Yeah, Saul, Saul Goodman. Saul Goodman. The guy I grew up with, the Thornhill. Saul Goodman. You actually know a guy named Saul Goodman? Yeah, I always just said that. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah so you... anyway, it's his lawyer, and they're actually making a prequel spinoff about Bob Odenkirk, Saul Goodman, ah. who was part of the Conan writing staff with Louis C.K. and, and Rob... Robert Smigel. <laughs> Amazing. Insane writing staff, all Lauren Michaels again. There is a, there's a video on YouTube which just surfaced of Louis C.K. and Robert Smigel being guests on Conan in like 94, like the first year, and there were these dog trainers. And they were acting as though they're like these. Oh, they faked it. Yeah, they faked it. Yeah, you look it up on YouTube. It's pretty funny. Out. It's so. But back to Breaking Bad. So Saul Goodman had a bodyguard. This is him, and I'm showing every for Cab who doesn't know. His name is Huel. Oh, that's uh, that's uh, what's that's, that comedian's uh, Lavar, name? Lavelle. Uh, oh my gosh, he was in. Uh, Lavelle Crawford. Is yes, that yes, right. yeah. So, at one point during the final season. Lavelle or Huel is put into a motel room because for his safety <laughs> and he's left there and I said you know you can't come out and they get some information out, but you can't come out Huel because you may die and that was never cleared up so that that's kind of you know I feel bad for Huel if anyone, <laughs> if anyone out there is a Huel fan you'll know what I'm talking about he's just left sitting in that motel room by himself I hope he's okay overall though you're uh 
where do you rank Breaking Bad as far as television shows go in the pantheon of greatest TV shows ever? Two. It's number two for you. Mm -hmm. What's number one? The Wire. The Wire. Wow. You are. Yeah. That's okay. And and you know sometimes you forget because time passes and you forget how good something is. But I recently um, watched The Wire uh, season four opening scene again. And for anyone who hasn't seen that, just look it up on YouTube. The Wire Season 4 opening scene. That's all I have to say. It is perhaps the greatest scene in television history. Big words from a man that creates some of the best moments in at least Canadian television history. Oh, I was and, you said and, Vine. And <laughs> but uh, moving forward, we'll create some of the best moments in television history. My producer, my man, D. Thank you for uh, being part of uh, My Guy Monday. Uh, thank you. Thank you for listening to Cabbie Presents, the podcast.